Hey everyone, so it's not often that a champion goes from never played to 100% overpowered overnight, but it has happened with Nico. It's not AP here either, like we have been playing, even though that actually does work pretty well because Nico's just really good. This is actually on hit AD carry Nico. I'm not just saying AD carry as in played in the bot lane in the carry role and stuff. I mean genuinely building AD on her. You guys might remember that I actually did this when Nico first came out. It was the only video I made on Nico because it was pretty funny. This is the only way I could have some fun with her. So let's have a look at what happened, why she is so broken, and how you want to play her before she gets nerfed. Because let's be honest, she will 100% get nerfed pretty soon. Just to let you all know, uh, this video is sponsored by Lowiz, a free app on the overall store to give you that edge that I've been testing out on stream. In Champ Select, you'll get ban suggestions based on who you're playing. So like Draven is a pretty bad matchup for Kaiser, so you might want to ban him. You'll get counter suggestions as well based on who you're against, uh, rune choices for that champion you pick, which honestly is really useful if you're playing in normal or something and you don't want to look anything up but you need something right there in the loading screen you've got a ton of information for everybody their win rates if they're good on champions their runes and actually one of my favorite parts is this recent performance thing where you can see their win rate recently on champion and kda and stuff and how well they're doing with it there's a link down below in the description to download it so go check it out and let me know what you think this all started two days ago in 9.5 when we had these buffs her e root was adjusted they didn't even call this a buff by the way before it would root for 0.5 seconds on every enemy it hit but if if it hit two or more enemies then the last champion hit would empower it to last for up to three seconds of max rank after the buff it lasts up to 1.5 seconds on the first enemy hit and up to three seconds on every single enemy it hit afterwards so the first enemy hit is rooted for longer but the empowered is still actually the same duration it just empowers after one enemy not two and applies it to everybody not just the last champion hit as an example, if you don't play Nico, you're not sure what I mean. If you hit one minion and two champions after that before, that would root the minion for 0.5 seconds, the first champion for 0.5, and the last champion for up to three. Now it roots the minion for up to 1.5 and both champions for up to three seconds, and that is huge. So it's easier to snare for longer, and it will keep them in place to set up your ultimate, your Q, and in this case, your auto attacks. On hit Nico works because her W has this passive part to it. Apart from the clone, like that's the active, every third basic attack you deal bonus magic damage and it grants bonus move speed. This damage is 50 to start with and it goes up with every rank up to 170 damage at rank 5 with up to 40% move speed. This is why you max your W first in this build, you take press the attack and you get loads of attack speed. It also works with a rage bait in the exact same way that it works with Vayne's silver bolts. Once stacked, your passive will apply every two auto attacks instead of every three. Honestly, this build is actually very similar to why Vayne works even though normally you would not compare Nico and Vayne and even put them together at all. The other really and I mean really big thing is that her passive damage applies to towers. You absolutely shred towers if you're left alone with this. Every three hits you smack it for the bonus damage or every two with the rage blade and it even helps you kite more as well because you have a ton of move speed so you can attack moving kite properly with an auto attack focus build. Speaking of the build this is what you're going to be running. So press the attack really good synergy with your three hit passive on your W, it increases that W damage, your auto attacks, and your ability damage once it's procced. Triumph is normally what we take in row 1, but you do go Blather and King first, so overheal is actually also a really good choice. It won't really do much before the first item, but once you've built some life still, it's really good. Alacrity for the attack speed, and then we also go Coup de Gras for the bonus damage. Now, the secondary is normally Domination, going Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. Ravenous especially is amazing, since the on-hit damage and all of your abilities are going to heal you. The item build is Blather and King into Rage Blade as your core items pretty much every single game. Then you can go into a Zeal item like Runins for a bit more AoE damage, a Rapid Fire Cannon for the single target, or even a Phantom Dancer if you need a bit of help staying alive. Or you can go Wit Send, which reduces their magic resist and increases all of your ability damage, so it's really good synergy. Normally after that, you're choosing from items like uh, Zonya's uh, Frozen Mallet is actually really good on her, or Guardian Angel, or you go into Infinity Edge for max DPS. Skill Order is maxing W uh, for damage and then into your E afterwards for the longer root durations because the hold of it, how long it holds somebody in place does actually scale with the rank of the ability. I did this a ton before and it's honestly so much fun. It's really good. You've got a clone to kind of kite people with some okay pushing power as well. Your Q can even supplement that part kind of. You have your E though to peel yourself or to chase people down and root them forever. Even like the first person you hit now is for one and a half seconds. That's so good. Your ultimate gives you a shield. It does a butt ton of damage on its own without AP and stuns nearby enemies so you can protect yourself. It is a bit of a weird play style though. So what I'm going to do is run over some games with you in case you want to play this and try it out for yourself and abuse it while you still can before it gets nerfed. So Uzi, uh, first of all, is smashing with his setup right now. So we're going to take a look at how he does it. 
The first game I want to show you is this one, which is a little bit of a stomp, but it's mainly because Nico is just way too strong at the moment. So this is Uzi. I uh, can't see his name because I don't have the characters in stores, but it's Korean uh, challenger slash grandmaster kind of elo. His first clip is really good to show you just how Nico actually works. So Ezra and the Tom are going to get level two first and uh, they're going to try and go aggressive, which normally, you know, you get level two advantage, you try and capsize on it, right? Nico is just going to kite backwards and this is really showing you just exactly what the on hit Nico side thing is doing. So every time she spits out that purple bolt, that is the three hit passive. Uh, the third hit is going to do way more damage and even just level one, just auto attacking is actually going to do a, a pretty good chunk of damage just because of that bonus on hit gets a really easy double kill at the very start of the game and you'll see just how deadly uh, she's going to be with a lead. We've skipped forward a little bit in this game. Now, uh, level six, uh, he's got his ultimate finally, and it'll kind of show you how you really set up a fight, right? So your E is really powerful, but only once you've hit a minion first, which you'll see now he's going to aim this, hits a minion first, then hits everybody else. It keeps him in place for so long because it's the empowered version. Three hits on the Ezreal, press the attack procs after that, and your W passive as well. So that is a bunch of damage. That's really how you want to sub all of these fights. Hit a minion first. Then it hits the others and it's great, right? So I'm going to turn around on the Tom Kenshi after they've been ganked. But your ultimate really is a defensive tool, kind of like this. It does secure the kill onto the Tom, sure, but it's really there as well to stun the Skana, give you a bit of a shield. Use your clone, run it at somebody. They'll tend to run away because they think you're actually running at them, which you're not. You're just kind of kiting around. So both defensive tools, that's exactly how you set up a fight with your E. Minion first, hit the person behind, then focus them down with your auto attacks and with your press the attack. And use your ultimate if they get too close and also use your clone if you need to. This next phase in the game is kind of weird, but I want to show you a bunch of different things. So first of all, look at this tower. It gets absolutely wrecked. Every three hits, you're going to apply your passive, and you can see it chunking down on that third hit. This is the last one. The plates haven't even gone just yet either, but it's still chunking this down. Now we have a bit more control, though. Uh, level 8, if we press tab on the, the items, uh, she does have, or he does have, Blade the Ring King. So he is massively far ahead. He does have five kills, sure. Focus on the items though. Here's Bader and King. We have a Tarm though from the flank. And if you watch how he plays these fights, basically just kites away. There's a massive chunk of damage now, but he's going to turn onto the Ezreal because that's a priority target. Use the ultimate. Actually gets eaten by the uh, the Tom Kench there. So he lasts a little bit longer than normal. But again, this entire time, all the Uzi is trying to do is just kite away. Use his auto attacks. It actually does heal you as well because of the the, uh, the Ravenous and everything like that. So the more you can auto attack, the more you're going to heal. Again, kite even more. Max range. You actually have quite a lot of uh, range, which is really good. He uses clone there for the move speed though to dive away just a little bit. Create a bit more distance. Even goes back in here for the Scarlet. Now that is having some massive balls. Goes back in. Eventually he manages to dodge what it didn't dodge the E, it kind of cancels because Skana dies. But what you want to focus on basically is again using your ultimate uh, when everybody's around you. Don't go chasing somebody trying to use it. Use it when somebody's close to you. Kite as much as you can and just auto attack as much as you can. And that is all of your damage really, and it absolutely does a ton. So this is a game that Uzi actually ends up losing. Uh, right now, he's not doing too great. 1, 2, and 3 has played the Ring King, but Draven is 4, 1, and 3 and doing really well. He's had a bunch of ganks, and unfortunately, Uzi hasn't been able to do too much. But again, jumped on here massively, or to ready to start. Use ultimate preemptively, though, which is really smart because Lee Sin dives in. Uh, had to do it if you wanted to use his Q. Takes it, gets the shield to the face, managed to peel back, actually kill as well. But one thing I want you to watch for here is he's being very careful, obviously. But he's going to start to attack that control ward. He's actually going to stack up his W passive on that and then attack the Galio. And it's going to do the three-hit passive on the first attack on Galio because you can stack it on other stuff. It's not a single target thing. I really want to make this clear. You can stack this up on minions, two hits on minions, one hit on a champion, and that third hit on a champion will do the bonus damage. So I think it's also fair that we uh, kind of show you what Nico is bad at as well, uh, because right now, obviously, we've only shown you some good stuff. So Nico is really bad when things go wrong like this from pretty high range, because Nico is, in essence, just an auto attack machine. If people are whacking her from really high range, so like the Gangplank Barrel or the Draven Chunk there or the GPQ, she has no time to stack her Rage Raid at all, and she's pretty much useless, honestly. Like, often then this isn't going to happen because if you engage properly and you're the first one catching you do have a lot of time and that's fine but when you're against the burst champion it kind of sucks now obviously you can see she's got everything stacked up here kind of and is able to shred down the kale flashes in for the the root but unfortunately everybody else is there as well which um isn't too great and gp is going to snipe her down because again GP has really high range, and Nico is not able to deal with that. So that is one of Nico's biggest weaknesses, and if you're going to lose, you're probably going to lose that way. This is a really good example of what happens when you've got your E maxed out. So Uzi has five points in his E right now, and if you watch the Galio as well, he's actually going to snipe him with a max range E, 
And look how long that lasts for, man. Like, he actually has to walk up. Alistair can engage. That Galio is dead purely because uh, Nico's E was buffed and is, well, pretty ridiculous. Then charges after the KO as well. Meanwhile, now she's, like, fully online. And Nico is amazing in these fights because Rage Bait is stacked. You're applying your W every two hits. Ultimate wasn't even needed, and that's a very easy triple kill. When you have your Rage Bait stacked in a long fight and you don't get focused, Nico is honestly one of the highest damage champions you can actually play at the moment. This is going to be the last fight of the game, and I think, again, it's important to show you uh, how Nico can be bad and why they end up losing this game. So, Nico has four items right now. Uzi has played pretty well, gone really ham on the damage, though. It's going to bite him in the ass. Just a little bit. Shreds the inhib, which is great. But again, uh, going to go back in here. Fizzan's a good ultimate. Well, kind of good ultimate onto the GP. If you watch, though, he's going to get absolutely shred. Well, he dodges the Galio Taunt, which is really good. Absolutely shred there by a barrel from GP from miles away. GP's going to flash in Q and auto attack. And now Nico is really low health. To get any health back, he, like Uzi has to auto attack, but can't. Because GP's going to use auto attack. Draven's going to uh, crit. With the burst again and um, they end up losing this game unfortunately nico is really powerful obviously as a champion but that is how you lose uh, so i've shown you the good sides the bad side as well good luck if you end up playing her uh, thank you for watching the video and for now i will leave you with robots